Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. We're going to talk today about Pilsners, but we're going to talk about taking the easy road out. <laughs> Take the about, easy road out. We're all out. about working hard when we need to work hard, yep. but then sometimes maybe you don't need to work so hard. That's very true. Uh, so Pilsner is a lager, which mm -hmm. means that you ferment it at cold temperatures and then you lager it, lager it or store it, store it for an extended period of time at mm -hmm. a colder temperature. So mm -hmm. that it does a lot of clarification. It's supposed to make a cleaner beer, crisper, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So we both did these beers fermenting at room temperature. Mm -hmm. So this is a little experiment. Yep. So let's let's start off by talking about mine. I'm I'm calling mine an American Pilsner because it's got adjuncts or an, a, okay. an adjunct. All right. So um, I did uh, ten pounds or four point five kilograms of German Pilsner, one pound or four hundred and fifty grams of flaked maize. And I rested at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, or 65 C, for 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then for the boil, I did two ounces, or 56 grams, of Czech Saz for 60 minutes. And then I was supposed to do, <laughs> at the end of the boil, another ounce of Czech Saz, or 28 grams, at flame out, but I forgot. So I started okay. chilling. I started chilling, and I got down to 84 degrees Fahrenheit or 29 C, and then I remembered. So I was like, "Ah, oh, you know, should I heat the thing back up?" No, I oh. just went ahead and put the hops in. Okay. So I screwed up. But after that, I used, uh, I chilled down the uh, wort with the assistance of a pond pump recirculating ice water through. Right. the copper chiller, yep. and I got it was able to get down to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, or 10 C. And I did that because I wanted to pitch the yeast, and I pitched uh, Imperial L17 Harvest yeast, which is a lager yeast. Mm -hmm. So I, I pitched it at that low temperature, that 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I put it down in my basement, which is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. and I just let it naturally warm up. So okay. I thought maybe, you know, I'll ease the yeast into fermenting slowly and <laughs> I mean, this is not scientific at all. <laughs> slowly I turn. <laughs> inch by <laughs> inch. <laughs> so um, it started out at 1049, finished at 1010, so 5.2% uh, alcohol. Pretty simple beer, pretty simple technique. Mm -hmm. Why don't you pop the top there, Steve? and see with our basic brewing bottle opener. And I'm reading from our basic brewing brewer's logbook that Steve designed. And I'm pouring. You were supposed to pour, but I guess I'm pouring. Oh, okay. But I'm pouring. I was, so, I was busy pontificating. That's all right. That's what you're here to do. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Looks like I didn't clean. I didn't wash those glasses very well last <laughs> But, uh, ooh, it's a, ooh, it's That's all right, Daniels. Cheer. Oh. That was a light, a light tap. Here, there we go. Right. Ooh, look at that. Wow, that's beautiful. And uh, that's it's what's... not crystal clear, but I didn't do any fining. I didn't do any gelatinizing or anything like that. It's got a little bit of that nice lagery kind of bouquet. It's not mm. strong. Nice. It's a pretty tasty beer. Very tasty. Nice and light. This is what a big factory beer ought to taste like. <laughs> I say that pretty often. I mean, you know, it's like, this is what you can make. If you're the kind of person who really likes Miller or Bud or whatever, and those are, I'm not putting those beers down. If you like those kinds of, those American light lagers, this is a really good example of mm -hmm. it. It's not, <clears throat> it's not light as far as calories or alcohol. Mm -hmm. but <clears throat> but, no, but the flavor profile, the hot profile, it's just crisp. It's pretty close. It's a little to me, to my for my palate, it's a little, it's a little sweet, and I don't know if that. I mean, I don't know if that. What do you think? I don't think it's sweet. Okay, I I don't. <laughs> I, I, I'm just used to bit more bitter beers, I guess. This is, but but if I think back on when I used to drink, you know, Miller Lite and things like that, it's probably on a par with, with or or Budweiser right. or. You know those those kinds of beers. I, I think the more important thing is that it's in balance with itself. That's the 
that's mm. my mantra. It, it, it's, it is not very bitter, but then again, it's not heavy. It finishes it, clean. It finishes clean. It, it, everything is in there that's supposed to be in there. It's a nice, it's a nice tasty beer. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big drinker. I mean, you could sit out on the porch and. Well, you could drink a bunch of that. Have a bunch of these, <laughs> or go fishing, or. That's whatever. a lawnmower beer in the best sense of the word. Yeah, it's a tasty beer. Yeah. And, and of course, we didn't do a side by side of you know comparing, as the Brewlosophy guys have done. Sure. Uh, uh, but then they, through their experiments, have have found out, and we took part in one of those that you know when you ferment at lager temperature and you ferment the same beer, the same yeast at at room or at ale temperature, mm -hmm. people can't tell the difference. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, right. And and so that's the thing. It's like, do you not make the beer? Uh, because so you want to make a light lager, an American lager, a Czech lager, but oh, I can't get it to fifty-three degrees, and so you don't ever make that beer. I'm going to say no. Make, make the beer. Just make it. You know, or wait until the winter time. Exactly. When you're I mean, like my basement does get down to like 50, 55 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So you know, I could I could lager in the you know do a lager fermentation in the basement. This was fermentation temperatures around. 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which was what, 60 or... <laughs> Bear with me! <laughs> well, I'll super it on the screen. <laughs> 70 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> so, lager temperature. So this this, okay. so this made a tasty beer. It did. Okay. So, so you, now we're going to talk also, about... coincidentally, did just a Pilsner as well. Completely... <laughs> Not a Pilsner or Cal, but a Pilsner as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so... <laughs> So my I, beer... I amuse myself. I did the same thing. <laughs> well, I do that too, but the nuns have been slapping my hands about it. <laughs> so I'll get better. I Should I shave. pour while you... <laughs> yeah, why don't you pour? Um, my, beer, <clears throat> my beer is 10 pounds of German Pilsner malt. I have, it on, I have it on my phone here instead of my sounds, longbook. Sounds familiar. Two pounds of Vienna malt. One pound of acidulated malt. Ooh. Eight ounces of carapils, which makes it thicker. My beer is uh, started at 10.56, ended at 10.12. It's a 5.8% beer. What about hops? I'm getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, and here I was not, uh, not true to style, you might say. I used an ounce of Liberty at 60 you, minutes. You took some Liberty. I took some Liberty. <laughs> used an ounce of Liberty at 60 minutes, an ounce of Liberty at 30 minutes. And an ounce of tetaning at 30 minutes, and one ounce of tetaning at flame out. Oh my. That's the hops. The yeast is the Fermentus 3470 lager yeast. Ooh. And I like you. I did well, I like you too. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. I, comma, like you, comma. Um, I, I had to ferment it at room temperature. I actually was going to ferment it in my big industrial uh, refrigerator at work, and I realized it was too cold. Mm. It's like, oh, wait a minute, I can't use that. It's, that's fine for the lagering stage, but I wasn't going to raise the temperature in there because I have product in there that I want right. to keep cold. So I decided just to leave it out. I keep the store, I've been fermented at my store. I keep it at about 70, 71 degrees at the store all the time. So that's what it fermented at. And then I did lager it for about six weeks in that fridge at about 40 degrees. It's that good. I've sprung a leak. <laughs> this is the third show we've shot today. Mm. That's delicious. So it's a very different beer, but it still retains that lightness. It's a little got a little more body. There's a you know, there's just it's just a little bit bigger beer. Mm. And the hop character is obviously yeah. a lot more complex. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of spicy, spicy hop character in there. I call this the Crooked Creek Pilsner. Mm. That'll straighten you out. Mm. <laughs> that will. That is delicious. It, it, mine is a, as far as the, the flavor profile is, a, is, is pale in comparison to yours, but um, <clears throat> they're both similar in, the, in that there is no like, de there's no like um, diacetyl off flavors. No there's corn. no no off flavors at all. It's, mm. They're both cleanly fermented beers. Um, I prefer yours because it's more complex. Um, I would have a problem drinking yours 
as quickly as I would drink right. those, <laughs> which is They're, probably a good thing. <laughs> it, it, it's a, you can tell. You can tell they're from they're the same family of beer, mm. Um, mm. and they're both really good. So, oh my! And the malt, you get a little bit more caramel in yours. Mm -hmm. um, they both oh, got that, but mine, in comparison, is a little lemony. Yeah, it's interesting how you can pick up flavors. In, you know, oh. when you do things side by side, they're, they're, both, <laughs> they're both tasty beers. They're both good beers, yeah. They really are. And how interesting that they're not so wildly different, no. but, but nonetheless, within the range of what these are, mm -hmm. they're both Pilsners. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. I mean. So I guess, I guess the bottom line is if you don't have a fermentation vessel to ferment a pilsner in this case at lager temperature don't shy away from mm -hmm. brewing a pilsner you know it, and sure the, there are advantages and maybe if we had done these side by side you know brewing the the, te the traditional technique and blah, blah blah maybe we'd see some differences maybe we wouldn't the fact is that these are delicious beers um and uh, maybe would they get dinged by, you know, if you had a BJCP certified judge tasting them? I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not. B just share one with our friend uh, Desiree. Oh. Who is BJCP? Well. BJCP. <laughs> BG, PB this and J. Our, our third and final video show of the day. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think that they're the delicious beers. Uh, if you don't have a lagering chamber or something, don't shy away from, from brewing with these ingredients, uh, you know, just for fun. You'll, you'll, ha you'll come up with a delicious beer, and then later on, if you do acquire that equipment, then you can try it again and compare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll take my beers and go home. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. <laughs> Rough work. Wow. <laughs> They're both really beautiful too, you yeah. know? Yeah. They're, they're works of art. <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta go. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Happy brewing. Come and visit us online. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs and our brewer's logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. If you're in Fayetteville, Arkansas, stop by Steve's Brew Shop or find him online at stevesbrewshop.com. So we haven't changed our shirts for the shows, but we've changed the glass every time. That well, way people know it's a different show. Well, that's, that's all the effort we have. That's right. <laughs>